Hello, our topic today is corrections to misinformation about vibrational astrology. Fairly often I receive questions from people about vibrational astrology and they tell me they're confused because they watched a tutorial video or an interview of somebody, they read a book or an article or saw a discussion on social media and people are saying completely different things. And can I straighten this out? Yes, I can. And that's what I will do here. First, three of the things that are getting confused and misunderstood are harmonic astrology, a system developed by a fellow named John Addy in the 1970s, cosmobiology, another system of astrology developed by a fellow named Reinhold Everton in the 60s and 70s, and vibrational astrology, which is a system that I developed and really started to take form around the year 2000, and by 2010, we gave it the name Vibrational Astrology. So we have these three systems of astrology, and almost everything you can imagine is being said about them now, and it's very confusing. So for example, in harmonic astrology, there's something called a harmonic chart that they interpret. In Vibrational Astrology, we also interpret harmonic charts. So. On Facebook, somebody asked, gee, I don't know much about interpreting harmonic charts. Any advice? Good question. And people mentioned John Addy. They mentioned me. And Vincent Godbout, a fantastic astrology researcher and an astrologer, wrote, John Addy is a pioneer and his work on harmonics is admirable, but it has nothing to do with what David is doing now, the David meaning me. So he's saying, Vincent is saying, that harmonic astrology and vibrational astrology are like have almost nothing in common. Of course, we all interpret planets and we all interpret some aspects, but essentially they're so different to two different worlds. Compare that to an astrologer who was interviewed uh, several times and said in one of her interviews, harmonic, and astrology, harmonic astrology and vibrational astrology are synonymous. Whoa, somebody's not right here. <laughs> One person, Vincent, is saying they have almost nothing to do with each other. The other person is saying they have everything. They're just different words for the same thing. I mean, you can't get any more extreme than that. What the heck is going on? Well, Vincent is correct. The vibrational astrology and harmonic astrology are extremely different and have very little in common. So let me give you some examples of why I say this, just, you know, to make it clear. Let's start off with the planets. Like, what do you think Mercury does? Communication, Venus. Do you think of Venus as this archetype of love and beauty and Mars as a warrior? How do you think of it? Well, in cosmobiology, what Reinhold Everton and other people in cosmobiology did is they made associations, what they call correspondences. So here's an interpretation of Moon opposition Neptune, and it's related to possible breast, stomach, lungs, may be debilitated and susceptible, etc. Neptune with a Mercury, Uranus midpoint, nervous disorders, associations, correspondences. That's primarily how Everton describes astrological aspects and midpoints and stuff. How did John Addy describe the planets? very similar to the way astrologers do now. Mars has an affinity with red. It has an affinity with nine, has an affinity with the sound of the trumpet. So this is how astrology is very often done. These archetypal images, Mars is this vibrant, energetic, and we can associate it with different colors, sounds. There are associations, affinities in, uh, quite different actually from Eberton, who's much more concrete and behavior-oriented with specific behaviors, illnesses, etc. But overall, they're both using these correspondences. In vibrational astrology, it's completely different. We don't analyze planets as correspondences. We analyze them as forces. Mars is a force to accomplish. Venus is a force to attract beauty. And the interpretations end up tremendously different. It's not subtle at all. So this idea of planets as forces as fundamental that they are not archetypal, archetypes are born out of the forces, is a radically different approach. So throwing all these things together and saying they're all the same is extremely confusing and it's incorrect. They're radically different. And it's not only my opinion that they're radically different. 
Take David Hamblin. He was one of the leaders in harmonic astrology. He died, on, I'm sad to say, because he, he was a good friend of mine in January 2022. Um, he always thought it was confusing and incorrect that people called my system of astrology harmonic astrology. Sometimes people would do that. And when I came up with the name Vibrational Astrology, and I emailed him and I said, I've got a name that I've settled on. I've played with a bunch of different names. I've come up with this. I'm going to keep this. This is it. He was so happy <laughs> because I respect and honor his work. It's beautiful work. It's different from what I do. And th that they were getting confused, this, this was beautiful. Full support from the harmonic astrology community that these are really different worlds. I was at an astrology conference in London, and I met Balder Eberton there, the son of Reinhold Eberton. And I told him how I was integrating ideas from harmonics with ideas in cosmobiology in a new, unique system. And he said, wow, that's really interesting. It sounds like a promising hybrid. Yes, that's what I am doing and have done. Created a hybrid. And this hybrid is not just grabbing ideas from different systems, but created a whole new framework a whole new conceptual way of understanding what astrology is. Now, of course, I'm doing that because I think it's an improvement, but that's not the point. You know, the point is that these are separate systems with their own internal consistency, their own logic, their own way of working, and there's very, very little overlap between cosmobiology, harmonic astrology, vibrational astrology, modern Western psychological astrology, Vedic astrology, they're primarily different, the way you look at the chart, the way you interpret. In the 1970s, I corresponded with Dane Ridjar. I told him I was combining his ideas with harmonic astrology. He was very skeptical. He, <laughs> to him, what, what are you doing? And that's, you can't mix these together. So there's a long history to the development of this new system of astrology. And supported by everybody is understanding that there is distinct and separate from each other. And there's even a bigger thing that's going on, which is how we even approach what astrology is. Harmonic astrology is based on the idea, idea of a paradigm, <clears throat> excuse me, paradigm of waves. Rudyard has an abstract philosophy and psychology about astrology. Vedic and theosophical astrology have strict rules. Modern Western uses primarily personal experience and tradition of ideas. And what we're doing in vibrational astrology is something that was born after Addy even lived, after Reinhold Everton did most of his work, which is an evidence-based practice, which developed in the 1990s and got formalized and implemented in areas like medicine and psychology. So here I talk about what an evidence-based practice is. It has formal rules. We have entered a whole new way of understanding and conceptualizing that astrology is a, is a an energetic processes. We test it and evaluate and work with it in a completely new way. And fortunately, we have a large body of evidence from modern research methods. We confirm it with client work, and we have a very sophisticated and intricate uh, theoretical framework. So this whole new world has begun and using information age stuff, and, and we've gotten the information out there in books like the book the Astrology of Bipolar Disorder, a Scientific Breakthrough, which is a bridge to this new paradigm. So vibrational astrology is radically different from these other systems, and they are radically different from each other. Addy, John Addy, did not use midpoints. Midpoints are not part of harmonics. When people start saying harmonics and cosmobiology are so similar, oh my gosh, they have almost no overlap whatsoever. And they existed and were popularized at the same time, around the 60s and 70s. So the idea that astrologers are saying that midpoints are part of harmonic astrology, that's just flat out wrong. It's false. Not true. So here I talk about some of the um, theoretical framework for astrology, where we've integrated ideas from, from physics and Fibonacci numbers and spin and dimension reduction, whole complex, intricate uh, theoretical framework that's part of uh, vibrational astrology, nothing like that exists even remotely similar in other systems of astrology. I'm not saying this to brag about how different vibrational astrology is. 
I'm doing this to emphasize that all of these systems are beautiful systems of their own and they need to be respected and appreciated for what they are. And, and I have here different systems of astrology are like different games. Baseball, basketball, bowling, you name a game, they have their own rules, their own way of operating. And failing to appreciate and respect that baseball and basketball are different sports and just throwing them together uh, confuses piece of people. It is also disrespectful and I'm, I dare say arrogant to fail to give full credit to the developers of these different astrological systems. So I mentioned Vincent Godbout and, and what he said about vibrational astrology. It said some nice things about how it advanced from harmonic astrology and it also works from many other systems. Um, he, he is not a harmonic astrologer or a vibrational astrologer particularly, but he's respecting and honoring another tradition, another system. If you play baseball, you can love basketball players. Why not? But don't say that a baseball player is the same as a basketball player. I mean, they, it's different worlds, and it's even more radically different than, than that analogy. So that's really what's going on. And I want to thank you and I, uh, for watching this video. And I hope this video makes it clear that vibrational astrology, harmonic astrology, cosmobiology, Uranian astrology, symmetrical astrology, Vedic astrology, evolutionary astrology, humanistic astrology, classical medieval astrology, Hellenistic astrology, and other systems are distinct with their own internally consistent methods. They need to be respected and honored, not watered down, whitewashed over, explained incorrectly, and we need to honor and respect those traditions and the people that are involved in them. So, um, yeah, so, so that's, that's the bottom line, as well as just making clear of the actual facts and not rewriting history in a way that never happened. Okay, here's some information about sources of information, different people that are involved in teaching, different books, etc. And I want to thank you if you are a subscriber, if you are a member of my YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to make a more detailed version of this video for members where we go into more uh, details about it. I hope this helps remove some of the confusion. I've gotten many requests for this video because of the confusion that's being created by this misinformation that's out there. Thank you very much. God bless. Namaste.